it's a basic theme in the Buddhist teachings that we want to de develop the good things that are already there. We all come with good potentials. We all have some forms of skillful mental states. And the problem is that they're not usually given that much a chance to develop. Because we move back and forth. Sometimes the mind thinks in skillful ways, sometimes it gets overcome by greed, anger, and delusion and goes off in unskillful ways. Back and forth like this. And nothing really positive has much of a chance to grow. And so when we meditate, the Pali word is bhavana, which means to develop, to increase. So that's what we're doing, is we're increasing the things that are already there. Like the breath. Ordinarily the breath comes in, goes out, and there's not that much to it. But if you focus your attention on it in a steady way, as you tune in to the breath, you find that the sense of ease grows greater and greater and greater. It's like the sun shining on a, on a seed. If the seed is left in the dark, it won't sprout. But as the sun shines on it, okay, things come out. It sprouts. Leaves, roots, turns into a plant. But if the sun is shined on it just a little bit, it'll start to grow, and then if it's dark again, it'll stop. So we're going to do is shine on it constantly, and give it a chance to grow constantly. Like the vegetables up in Alaska during the summer, they have all those hours of sunlight, so they grow at amazing rates. So you want to shine your mindfulness, shine your alertness onto the breath. There's not much else you have to do. It's like the sun shining on the plants. The sun doesn't have to reach down and arrange the plants. Simply by shining on them, the plants respond. And so it is with the breath. If you maintain steady awareness, steady mindfulness, all the rough spots in the breath will start ironing out. And it will just seem more and more natural to breathe in a way that feels comfortable coming in and going out. And that way you take a quality that's already there and make the most of it, simply by your continued attention. And you find that other good qualities, both in the body and the mind, can develop in the same way, just by focusing your attention on them, giving them the right chance to grow, and whatever thing, other things they need for their nourishment. You tune into all kinds of good things. There are many different levels, for instance, of the breath energy to the body. They're all there all the time. It's just they're not developed. And if you tune into them, it gives them a chance to develop and grow. Until ultimately the breath energy fills the body, and there's no need to breathe in or breathe out. This is a very steady sense of stillness that develops. And as the breath gets steady and still this way, the mind begins to take after the breath. It gets in touch with its levels of stillness as well. Because there are parts of the mind that are totally unaffected by anything. It's just they get covered up by all the other things going on in the mind as well. But as we stay with that breath that grows more and more steady, more and more still, the opportunity for the part of the mind that's steady and still comes so that it can show itself. Then as you stay with it for long times, as you tune into it for longer and longer periods of time, it takes charge more and more within your awareness. And as you get more and more skilled, you find it's there at all times. You can tune into it at any time. The sense of space that surrounds the body. All the various topics that you can take as topics of meditation, they're there already. It's just they're there in an undeveloped state. If you tune into them and learn how to keep the mind tuned. This is a lot of what the skill and concentration is. is once you get a particular state going, learning how not to do so much that you destroy it, or how you get too lazy so it all falls apart. There's a certain level of consistent energy that has to be just right that you put into it. This is the persistence that makes the difference.
It's like walking a tightrope. Sometimes you lean too far to the right, you fall off. Lean too far to the left, you fall off. But after a while, you get so that you can stay on. Keep your balance for longer and longer and longer periods of time until it becomes instinctual. You get a more and more instinctive sense of how to maintain that balance. So this is what the practice is. It's practice in sharpening our tools for tuning the mind in and letting it stay there. Once you learn how to do this with a the breath, then you find you can do this with other topics as well. And this talent you have of tuning the mind in becomes a very important skill. Because you realize that you, the areas of your awareness have many levels. And you, really, and you do have the choice of where you're going to tune in. Oftentimes we tune in on things that are just actively harmful to ourselves and other people. And it seems that we have an awful lot of skill in tuning into those. Greed, anger, and delusion are things that are very easy to keep track of, to and you keep adding fuel to them, adding nourishment to them, so they grow and grow and grow. But it requires more skill to focus on things that are, that are actually beneficial for the mind. And you have that choice. As long as the mind has to depend on what they call a support, the aramana, try to choose a good support for the mind, like the topics of con concentration. And you realize, after all, they're not there only when we're sitting here with our eyes closed. They're there all the time. An important part of the skill is learning how to tune in them whenever you need them. So when the things outside or things in the body are in a turmoil, okay, there's a certain level of awareness you can tune into. So at the very least, you're not caught up in that turmoil. And as your skills get sharper and sharper, you can begin to cut through the turmoil, exactly, see exactly where it comes from, what allows it to happen, and what you can let go of that can stop it. So this ability to tune in and stay tuned is an important part of the meditation. In other words, you stop channel, what do they call it, channel hopping, channel jumping, channel surfing, whatever. I haven't watched TV for a long time. But you put down the remote control and you just stay tuned to this one thing, the breath. And the breath takes you as far as it can go, okay, then you stay tuned with a sense of space. And that takes you as far as it can go, okay, you stay tuned to the sense of infinite consciousness. It's all there. It's simply your ability to stay tuned in the right way that will nourish these useful qualities. So that they're, they're always there, but the question of being able to tune into them when you need them, that's what you've got to work on. So try to focus in. If, something, if it doesn't work, okay, make adjustments. Be able to monitor yourself. Because that's how balance, people develop a sense of balance. You see people walking on a tightrope, and it's not that they stay perfectly straight in line all the time. It's just that they're very good at correcting any imbalance. Whatever is needed to stay on, okay, they can do that. Those are the talents you've got to develop as a meditator. Learn how to correct for any imbalance. This is what the Buddha was talking about when he talked about attention and intention, having a feedback loop. In other words, you pay attention to what's going on. If things seem a little bit out of a balance, okay, remember, your intention is to maintain your balance. And so you do what you can to develop that skill. So not only is there feedback, but you can monitor the feedback and direct it in the direction you want it to go. That's what's required for any skill. It's not a mechanical process. It's more, it's more organic. You're in charge. You steer the way. It's like steering a sailboat. In the beginning, you sense the boat's tipping over in one way, and then so you turn the rudder, but you turn it too far, and the boat capsizes the other way. 
But after a while, you begin to get a more instinctive sense of, okay, how much press you have to put on the rudder in order to keep the boat on an even keel. That comes from feedback. It comes from practice, trial and error, again and again and again. And so your sense of coordination gets more and more instinctive. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to maintain our balance on the breath so that the pressure of the mind isn't too great, it's not too little. It's just right to keep that sense of comfortable breath going and allow it to spread and nourish the whole body. So that you become sensitive to more refined breath sensations. It all develops from these basic qualities of mindfulness and alertness. Paying attention to what's going on, paying attention to what you're doing, and making adjustments. So you can keep the mind fine-tuned. This is the skill that you work on as you're sitting here with your eyes closed, and it's the one you should also work on at other times of the day, throughout the day. Because the basic survival of the mind depends on this. It's not that the issues you have to deal with in meditation come up only while you're here with your eyes closed. They're out there all over the place. And so you want to be able to take these skills that you've mastered here and, and apply them all the time. At the end of the meditation, you say, okay, the meditation period is over, it's time to stop. That doesn't help anything at all. Just practicing the tools that you need for real-life problems, real-life things that are going to knock you off balance, if you're not careful. But just remember, the, the good things there in the mind are always there. The potential for them is always there. It's just a question of learning how to locate them and keep tuned into them. And that's what makes all the difference.